Hello and welcome to the first of hopefully a very interesting series. Welcome to Total Extreme Wrestling. If you don't know what Total Extreme Wrestling is, it is a fantasy wrestling booker um, where you can book your own wrestling shows um, in the game. Um, as you can see already, we do have quite a few real life companies. This is a real life save. Um, this one is not the one what some people are using. I think this is the one which was originally set up by the Who, and I will check that from the next video for you. Or in fact, actually, we'll have a quick look now. We can just save the game quickly and just tab out, and I'll show you what save I'm actually using for this. Um, whatever, I don't really bother about administrator. So we are using the Real World mod by the Who 87. Um, if you want me to do something in 2001, I've got that here, or 1994, that is also here. If you'd like to see something like that, or 2005, I don't really know what's in the 2005 mod. So you can have, you know, if you'd like me to do that. I do use February, which is the version which is set in July. Um, which is the last one, I think, which is the late, not the latest, is the latest one he did. I ain't going to upgrade it. So this is Falling Star Wrestling. Now, as I open this back up again, you can see I'm using Monster Edge. I'll show you all this in a bit. Falling Star Wrestling is a real life company. Um, and I'm going to read you this and I'm going to run through our popularity, our product, and then we'll have a look at hiring some people and the three people who are already on the roster. So Fallen Star Wrestling is one of British premier professional wrestling companies promoting shows and running Wrestling Training Academy with a growing claim. Our shows mix traditional British wrestling, high flying action, and call of characters creating Germanic, dynamic and exciting family fun friendly wrestling entertainment. Our ask is to stop playing from around the UK alongside homegrown talent from highly it's a highly successful wrestling academy. Excuse my, excuse me there, it's quite early in the morning. Um, this is a real life company. Um, this is, I will put a link to their Facebook page in the description, hopefully. If I forget, just tell me and I'll put it in the comments. It's set out of Kings Lynn in Norfolk, um, the same home as Nick Aldis. It is, in real life, it is run, oh, wrong button, it is run by, or it is owned and run by Jimmy Starr, who is... In the game on this save here he is this is jimmy star i do have matt Waters as well set to be here these are the only two guys we have got at the moment i'm going to bring in a few more people this is me as a road agent i will need to get a better road agent shortly we'll do that in a bit excuse me not very appropriate to my first video um so first off we are local we're not very big we're 54th in the world i don't um at the moment we've got in importance, we've got four, which is F minus, F minus in central and northern England, zero and zero in Ireland, and ten in southern England. Um, and we need, you know, in, pop in popularity, if this will work, excuse me, I do have some problems. Um, this is, um, you know, see a four, F minus, two, F minus, and ten. So it's all the same. You know, I haven't skipped any months. We are as it starts. So to move to the next size we need to achieve 11 importance in one region and we'll come to one size possible. So we've got nothing here, you've got no events, you've got no default announcers, but we're coming over to active diff belts. Now the only thing I haven't changed, which I should have changed, but I'm going to cheat a bit with this, and this is the only side of cheating you can see, I'm going to set myself to do that. The reason I'm doing that and I'm going to change that announcing because I really have just realised that I'll change that before we start the next thing. Is I do have myself set to maximum the other saves. I have changed it for this. So, first thing we need to do, I think, is have a look at wrestlers. We've already got two wrestlers. I I'm gonna go for ten wrestlers. Um I don't really normally, you know, worry about what wrestlers we're going for. I do try and just make this as exciting as possible so they can base in Britain. British Isles, I don't really do that, as I do anywhere, who's a wrestler, who's active, to hire, blah, 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 blah. exactly, an unknown in South British Isles, which is where we're based, um, you might know of another company that's run out of Norfolk, which is um, known as WAW, which is a promotion run by Ricky Knight and Zach Knight, Rory Knight. <laughs> Bless me, and all those sort of people. That's run by the family who you may know as Paige's family. Um, let's have a look now, see what we've got. So, um, 
Aaron Sharp, 400 Skegness in Lincolnshire. Um, so what skills has he got? Average. And um, what's his popularity like? So he's got 16. So, you know, at the moment he's quite good. So we'll bring him in. There is a few people you'll be looking at on this roster who I'll be bringing in because they actually are part of the company in real life. And you'll be like, uh, what? Um, I will be bringing in this guy, even though he's 800, which we've got 50,000 to blow. So, you know, we can't resist not having Adam Cole on the roster. I do put Adam Cole on any save I've got. You know, Adam Cole is my go-to guy for good main eventer. Um, I'm just going to quickly change this a minute because we're getting women up and I don't really want women at the moment. We've got... I'll set that to male just so we get a bit of a better idea. Now, if you don't know who certain wrestlers are or you're not sure about who's who in the game or who I hire... Don't worry, I know only certain people. I don't really know who Aaron Sharp is. I know Adam Cole is. I'm a big fan of um, his work in Ring of Honor and New Japan. I think he's absolutely bloody amazing. Um, I'm going to be bringing in a guy who I know. Not only as a professional wrestler, but as a personal friend from Sheringham in Norfolk. And this guy is called Bulk. He was trained by the Knights. He's not very good in the game. Um, but he's a good laugh. If you want to see some of his matches, if you go to the Falling Star YouTube channel... There's some matches on there of him. How much is Bubble Gun? 900. A bit too much to start off with. BT Gun? 400. We'll bring in BT Gun. BT Gun's quite good, I think. 400. Not bad. You'll see some people. I don't know who all the UK stars are. There is UK stars I will sign because I do know who they are. Um, just because I do watch a bit of progress. I do watch ICW every now and then. I'm at the moment into... Um, I think it's IPW and Lucha Forever. If you haven't watched Lucha Forever yet, go and watch that. It's bloody amazing. I'm going to bring in Danny Collins, another guy who ha who does work for the company at the moment. Anyone who would do bring in like Danny Collins and Bork, who are coming on the roster or on the roster page on the website, I will be using their picks. If anyone knows how to make better picks, then please do tell me, because I'm not sure about it. We'll bring in the Dragon Emperor. See, Dragon Kid's available. I'm not sure if he's any good. But, you know, international ta flair and talents are quite good for the, for what we want for this show. So, due to his disappointing visibility, da 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 da. Because we're doing nothing but events at the moment, it doesn't really matter. Um, if I do scan over anyone you would like me to hire in this list, please say so, you know. Because I'm going to be hiring over the next few weeks quite a few guys um i'm going to be hiring people i like as well as people you want me to hire so if there's anyone you would like to see come to the company and just part work you know please say so i'm not afraid you know i don't bite i will listen to your comments i will see what we've got going on see this is the fact is you're getting these people up because they're well known in our area right they're well known here but in america now they're so popular but you can't Getting for quite a cheap price, which is really annoying. Um, and you see, people like Omega won't come to us, but I am going to shortlist Omega. <sighs> Anyone who doesn't know why, you need to go and watch New Japan. I'm going to be bringing in two people now that you may not know, but I hopefully can build their characters up. Hopefully, you might get to know. If you are watching at the moment, Lucha Forever, you might know who Kip Sabian is. I don't worry, I do have pictures for these guys in the game. I'll be bringing on another guy of his who, who was his former tag partner later on. Um, Matt Taven, how much is he going to cost me? 400, I'll bring Matt Taven in. I need to bring Jonathan Windsor in, actually. That's someone I do need to get. I think Jonathan Windsor is an amazing guy. Um, Big Bad Rob Terry, 400, bring Rob Terry in. For some reason, he's the current NWA World Tag Team Champions in this save. I don't know if he is in real life. If someone does know about that, please tell me. Said Skylar, another wrestler I do have a picture for. You'll be laughing. He did appear for Global Force Wrestling, which is now TNA slash Impact slash Global Force, whatever's going on there. But to be quite honest, I've watched their shows recently, and they've been bloody amazing. Some of the, some wrestling which is quite good. There. I don't watch much Raw and SmackDown as I used to. I think that's got... 
slowly boring lately. That's not just me trying to be, you know, nasty to Raw Smackdown, but I do feel that, you know, those shows have got become, you know, too predictable. Um, and I need Tom Dawkins, another guy I do have a picture for. I'm just going to do something which might not make sense, but because we've got 50,000 to blow, I do like to go a bit outside the box. Now, the reason for this is, you know, these are all known. So these are not known to the area. So you're going to have the problem is people are not going to know who they are. So if you get a regional level star in um, or someone who will sign just to come in for one show, I do normally bring Will Ospreay in. I do normally bring four of these people in. The reason being is they're just they're still quite cheap to hire. But they do get people to come in, watch your shows, because they're regional. You know, people who are fans of the company will see these people if you pre-book them in matches and go, hmm, I like these. I'm going to be bringing in a few more than normal for this save just because I want to make this save as exciting as possible. So do expect some big names coming in. Who, this is probably the most expensive guy I'm going to hire. The reason being is I do love Doug Williams' work and I cannot resist a good bit of Doug Williams on the save. Nick Aldis ain't come up. I'll find him in a minute. I'm gonna, once I've done this, I'm going to check something and then we'll go over and just see if we can get Nick Aldis on board. I'm going to shortlist you for now. I don't think I'm going to have the money to hire you just yet. Um, Mark Andrews. 700. Bring Mark Andrews in. I like a bit of white lightning. And there is someone I'm going to hire, which I don't know why I haven't hired in Ring of Fire yet. He hasn't. Someone I haven't hired for a while in one of any of my personal saves. This guy, Jimmy Havoc. Bat, bat crazy he is. I'm going to try not swear, but don't. I can't promise anything. Um, a regional star. Is Nick Aldis going to come up in that list? There he is. Now, Nick Aldis will sign straight away normally. Um, the weird thing is I can get Nick and Drew quite quickly, which is really weird, just because they're quite expensive. I'm going to check something quickly just to see if we're even. One, two, one, two, two, one, 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 two, one. The reason I do this, it just makes it easier for booking, because I'm not a big fan of multi-man matches, like freeways and stuff, because I like to keep everything very even, but I don't think I'm going to be doing it for this save, so I don't know why I'm doing this, because I think the fact that I'm not going to, I'm be totally ignoring the um, momentum side of things in this save, unlike I normally do my own saves, because I like to keep everybody happy. So next, we need a referee. I do believe that's the next step to this. I'm just going to have a quick look to see how long we We've already been recording for 13 minutes, geez. Um, so we're going to hire a referee. Da, da, da. Can work in the British Isles. Um, based in... No, that's fine. Just say British Isles. Um, let's see who is the... Now, the problem with referees, I always find that the cheapest is always going to be 500. And I do like to go for someone who's got a nice picture. So, hello ICW referee, I Thomas Cairns. Welcome to the company. Now... Because I'm not very good in ring, but I seem to be very good because I forgot to change my fact I can talk on the mic and do commentary. I'm just going to have a quick sip of my coffee, sorry. Very sweet black coffee. Keeps me going. Um, we do need a road agent who's active. I'm not interested about gender, so either gender. Now, if I can find her, here she is. This woman used to work for World Association of Wrestling or Bellatrix. And me and her got into a massive shouting match, and security at North Walsham had to get involved. It's quite amusing. Um, I do not want to bring in someone I don't really know. See, you've got Mike Crackenbush here, who works for Shikara. You've got Marty Jones. And these are the sort of people you want to get. Marty Jones, who is, I do believe he was in World of Sport. I might be wrong on that, but I do believe he did work for World of Sport in its heyday, along with people like... Collodium Cake. Um, we are bringing in one guy who was on there when he was 14. And that is Danny Collins. I am bringing him in because he was a part of it. David Taylor as well, as you may know. He's someone else who was part of it. So we're going to bring in two road agents. We've got... So I think we've got quite a good setup going. 
Um, I will be changing pictures of certain people I'm bringing in, for instance. I think the knights, I will be changing. I think I'm only bringing one knight in. Yeah, I'm only bringing one knight in. For some reason, I'm not bringing Zach in with him, but that's fine. What I will do is I've got pictures on the save. I don't know if I can just show you quickly. Um, so on here, if I go to Rory Knight, for instance, I have got their actual pictures of the of the WAW website and the Fallen Star website. If you think that using WAW's logo on my save is ridiculous, please say so. But the reason I want to promote both companies um, as much as possible in the save, I want to speak about what these two companies are doing at the moment because I know a lot of people watch a lot of things. So these are all the Fallen Star guys I've got pictures for. Like that's King Kendo. I've got. One for, I don't know if I did download Parliament Windsor. I didn't get those two in the end, but that doesn't matter. Um, I don't know where my Rory Knight picture's gone. I did have one for Rory, but I'll probably find it later. I was going to just show you what I mean. That's ruined. Um, can I show you with Kip Saban? No, Kip Saban won't work. It might help if I was actually using my keyboard. Not my built-in keyboard, my other keyboard, which is quite noisy, which is why it's next to me. Because that's the built-in one. I never use that, it might be further down. Might not be. Um, I know that I've got one for Kip, I don't know what it. See, I've got one for like Kip Saban, which has got the WAW logo there. That's the only thing is some of them will have fun, so I smell of WAW. So when Kip comes in, I'll use that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip forward until the guys sign. I will then restart the recording and hopefully I can edit this on YouTube. If not, then it will be two videos in one session uploaded this will be part one and then part two will be signing people naming our first show and hopefully i might just start once everyone's signing with our first show and then do that as a separate video so for, for a quick one down we'll have hopefully signing with us adam aaron sharp adam cole bulk bt gun danny collins dragon emperor dragon kid drago king kendo kips over matt Taven. Rob Terry, Sid Scarlett, Zach Gibson, Tom Dawkins, Brad Slayer, Will Ospreay, Zach Sabre Jr., Al Aguero, Doug Williams, Warren Knight, Mark Andrews, Jimmy Havoc, Nick Aldis, Drew Galloway, Thomas Latler, Thomas Kearns, Marty Jones and David Taylor. So that is quite a good selection of guys. What we are going to have a quick look at now is I can go in to edit this if you want me to. Is the fact that Impact Wrestling here has these set as the titles. Which is fair enough. If you want me to go in to the editor, become Jeff Jarrett quickly, and then after, I think it's after Slammiversary, um, which is scheduled to be on Sunday, which has already happened. So if you want me to go in and edit this already, and then get rid of, I think it's in the alliances, the Global Force Alliance, where the titles are. If you want me to do that, I can do that for you, and then bring it back into company and then set that up as it is now in real life. I can do that if you want me to. Um, another thing I want to ask you is in this save, Austin Aries is still working with the WWE, I do believe. I think he's in NXT actually at the moment. He's not actually on the main roster, no, he's in NXT still for some reason. I don't know why that is. If you would like me to set that up so he's left the company, I can do that as well. As you can see, he's here on the save as the main event of NXT. I do know he gets called up quite quickly. So what I'll do now is stop the recording um, and there'll be things to think about and I'll come back. Hopefully we can edit this so it's together. So there you go, that's the new story. Um, and then hopefully when we come back we'll have a be on our first show and it'll hope, I'll actually get it booked so we just start recording the first show and then you guys can enjoy a great wrestling company known as Falling Star, my Falling Star. Believe me, none of these people who I'm hiring do actually work with the company in real life. <laughs> But there is some good wrestlers in there. Um, the ones who do, I will go through the ones who I know do for a fact. Bulk, Collins, and that is it. Apart from Jimmy Star and Matt Wolves. <laughs> um, Al Aguero has appeared. Doug Williams has appeared. I do know that they've got a show coming up which has got, um, I think it's that, I can't remember his name, but he was in the WWE United Kingdom tournament in Lynn. So I'll see you once I've got everyone signed. We'll get the titles sorted and we'll get some storylines going. So I'll see you in a bit. Thanks. See you back at the main title screen, or if not, see you in part two. Thank you.
Hello and welcome back. Um, I'm just going to get off this. Um, welcome back. I did realise when re-watching the previous video, I did forget to show you the product. So I'm going to do that now, um, quickly. So this is the product settings. So match ratio for events is 90%. Um, match ratio for TV is 80%. I do use that quite a lot. I normally have this at 100 but because I want to build up the characters, I've done it as 90 so that you can get to meet some of the characters. I don't use a face and heel divide. Um, there's no women's wrestling. Um, match intensity is a 40 and danger is a 60. If you're not sure what that is, that's like how often head drops or aerial attacks are used. And that's how physical and hard going. So we've got heavy traditional, heavy mainstream, um, heavy modern, heavy realism, and very low hardcore. So that's our product. So I've just spent quite a bit of time setting up the show. Everyone who I have hired, even the surprise people tonight who I've hired, are here. So we open up the show, and I don't know why the pictures are. I think I did the angle right or wrong. I didn't set them to be on screen. But just picture Zack Sabre Jr. and Marty Schools picture there. So Zack Sabre Jr. comes out to welcome the fans to the new and improved, into a new improved falling star. Zack, welcome to this new chapter in this awesome company. This place is going to explode. He is then interrupted by Marty's music playing to the shock of the fans. He steps through with his Bullet Club umbrella and T-shirt. Marty, Zack, Zack, Zack. Did you forget to tell JJR to call me? That little asshole sitting, sitting calling this show for the DVD. Did you know what? Do you know what I want tonight? I want you in that ring, one v one, no mess, no BS, just you and me, Zack. You on. See you later, pig. JJ, oh my god, Suzuki Gun versus Bullet Club tonight. And that will be happening later on on this card. So our, our opening match of the night is Matt Taven versus Rob Terry. In a belt that had subpar wrestling and non-existent crowd heat, Rob Terry defeated Matt Taven in 7.35 by pinfall with a freak buster. So Matt Taven defeated his cocky gimmick, and that got initial rating of average. Rob Terry debuted his badass gimmick, realistic gimmick, which got initial above average. Matt Taven had a ring -a ring performance of 24, Terry of 23. Um, Rob Terry, very nice, has been proven in both technical and performance in that match, not bad. Um, this is how I booked it, so it, went eight, it was booked to be 8 minutes. So yeah, that's me announcing and stuff. Um, Raid Agent notes, so you can just see how I set this match up to go. Next up, we have a 31E+. Plus. This match did better than what I thought it was going to be, but there we are. So this match in the bout that had subpar wrestling, but non-existent. Crowd Heat Dragon Kirid defeated Drago by pinfall with the Ultra Hero Karana. Drago has debuted his Demic Gimmicky, which has got an initial rating of very good. Excuse me, just let me have a quick drink. Um, Dragon Kid has debuted his Old School Face. Wholesome gimmick. He's got an initial rating of average. Dragon Kid was really off his game. I think that might be because I know that Dragon Kid has some language barriers being Japanese. Or the fact he's had to travel over it, I'm not sure. But I think it might be because he's having language issues with everybody else. But hopefully that will sort itself out when he starts learning English being with us a long time. So I do realise they do start learning English after a while. Um, Drago had a ring win performance of 35. Kid had a little... Ooh, I thought he'd be better than that Dragon Kid, 21. Um, no work or improvements, and there you go again, the road agent's notes, so you know how I book this. Next up in a decent match, which you've got 36 D minus. Um, Zach Gibson defeated Tom Dawkins in 809 by pinfall. Dawkins has debuted his old school face, wholesome gimmick. He's got an initial rating of very good. Tom Dawkins getting better his gimmick, which is good. Gibson's debuted his old face, school gimmick, wholesome. There's no heels faces, so I'll book him as he is a bit cocky, but I'm going to have him... Go for the fans because I think I like a better face gimmick. So these two are kind of faces, but not really because there's no heel and face divide in this company. And so both of them getting better at the gimmicks, which is good. I'm still set to be road agent and I didn't do a good job of it. And it showed. Great. Um, Tom Dawkins had an in-ring performance of 30 and Zach Gibson had a ring performance of 46. I'll have to sort that out for the next show where I'm not a road agent. Hopefully I don't get involved in any more matches tonight because that'll be terrible for us. Not bad. 30. Next up, I think they're 37D- in a decent match. Adam Cole defeated Brad Slayer in 739 by pinfall with the Panama Sunrise. 
I think that's how you say it. If I'm saying that wrong, please tell me. Adam Cole wins the Limitless Championship title, and I'll show you that after this show on the main title screen. I'm going to talk to you during the loan screen about some of the plans I had. But this match, the reason I've given Adam Cole this and not the in the main event is because Adam Cole is only a mid card because he's popularity. So I'm hoping this can boost having this belt on him can boost his popularity in our local region. But doing these sort of matches with Brad Stone, not bad at all. And he uh, Brad is improving in performance, not bad. Um, next up, we have a slight video. I didn't do a right ang right an angle for this, but it's just an angle hyping that. Holy shit, the London Riots have turned up against the Hooligans, and that's going to be, that is Vance, one of our storylines. And that match got a 38D minus, not bad. In a decent match, the London Hooligans defeated the London Riots in 8 10, when Roy Knight defeated James Davis by pinfall with Zebra Cross, and the Hooligans win the tag team titles. Um, James Davis debuted his old school average. James Davis seen off his game. Damn, Rob Lynch um, debuted his old school heel gimmick. Above average, Roy Knight debuted his old school gimmick, average, average. So they're all, they're all four heels, but as I said, no heel on face divide. So it does work, you know. Um, Robert Lynch got a ring ring performance of 34. Davis, 34. Sorry, Rob Lynch and Davis both got 34. Rory was the better one out of all of them, actually. And that advanced the tag team storyline. And everybody, Rob Lynch improving in filing and performance, Davis in performance. Knight in performance and Rory in performance, not bad. In about I had a decent reaction on the card, but subpar wrestling. This got better than I thought it was as well. Aaron Sharp, Dragon Emperor defeated Aaron Sharp by 7:45 by pinfall with a in a 30 plus match. Better range than I'm thinking I was going to get with some of these people. Very good indeed. Aaron Sharp debuted his old school face wholesome gimmick. Got initial rating of average. Dragon Emperor's debuted his old school face gimmick as well. Got initial rating of great. Dragon Emperor's really off his game. But he's getting better at his gimmick. Aaron Sharp had a ring performance of 32. Emperor had 35. So it's actually Sharp, I think, who gave us that good rating. Um, no work of improvements. Nothing else there, I don't think. Next up, in another surprise signing who I did not show you, John Hennigan turns up and takes on Super Bad Kip Saban. I think I did that terribly. In a decent match, Kip Saban defeated John Hennigan in 803 by pinfall in a 39D minus. John Hennigan Davies Rockstar gimmick. Cocky gimmick, great, um, old school face, average, above average, Kip Saban Silver's game, Hennigan 45, Saban 27, and Hennigan's improving in performance, this show's going really well, oh by the way I didn't tell you, this is called, this, this is the results from, we called the show to infinity and beyond because it's our first show, it's been held by Fulton Star, and it's in front of 150 people at the Ehan Hording Technology College used by the FWA originally. So we thought we'd go there tonight. It's in my list. So there you go. And another surprise signing, Bubba Gum. Who I didn't say I was going to, I said I wasn't signing, but of course I was. In a decent, in about that, a decent reaction on the crowd, but subpar wrestling. Bubba Gum defeated BT Gun in 741 by Pinfall with a Juicy Fruit Driver. So BT Gun debuts old school face gimmick. It's got an initial rating of above average. I will find a better picture of him online and add it into the game soon. Beauty Gum was really off his game. Bubba Gum too is old school face gimmick. Ooh, Beauty Gum 21 and Bubba Gum. I think these matches are going to be the worst, but as you can see, both Bubba Gum and Beauty Gum, Bubba Gum improving the technical. And Bubba Gum in no performance. I'm just going to have another quick drink of my Ribena. This is another promo I wrote. And I did this one correct. This is when I realised how bad I am at writing angles. I'm very, I'm, well, I'm not surprised with the rating. So this is a promo from Bulk. I will not try and do an impression of him because I do know him. He just goes, I'm European's largest heavyweight wrestler. And tonight I'm going to send King Kendo packing. The two largest wrestlers in this goddamn company. And I seem to have stopped writing the promo there. And I'm going to finish it off because I don't know why I stopped. I'm going to bat it out in this ring. And I'm going to kick some goddamn bulky ass. I don't know if that's going to be his thing, but he's kind of like a badass big guy. Go out there beating shit. And in about a decent reaction, but from the crowd, but subpar wrestling. Bulk defeated King Kendo in 8-16 by pinfall. It got a rating of E25. King Kendo, his old school face gimmick, has got a rate initial rating of below average. I don't know why Bulk, but I think because Bulk debuted a minute ago, and that's when he got his thing. Um, I think we're going to start getting to the... More interesting matches now. Oh, no, we've got one more. Matt Rottles 
versus Sid Scala, which got a 31 E plus in a decent match. Matt Rott was defeated Sid Scala in 8.57 by Pinfall. Sid Scala has debuted his old school face, wholesome gimmick. He's got an initial rating of average. Scholar seemed off his game. Scholar's getting better his gimmick. Matt Rawls had an in-ring performance of 32. Um, Scholar, Scholar had an inform sorry, Scholar had an in-ring performance of 28, and Walters had an in-ring performance of 42. And Scholar's improving in performance. And I told you, as you can see just there, that is the Global Force Wrestling logo. <laughs> um, in about a decent reaction from the crowd, but subpar wrestling. Danny Collins defeated Jimmy Starr. And I do think Danny Collins is. Quite old now. In 1531 by submission. Danny Collins debut his old school face. Wholesome gimmick. Got a short and very good. Danny Collins was really off his game. Star 25. Collins 19. Very bad in the, ring, in the ring at the moment. But Star's improved in performance. I don't think Danny Collins is going to improve very much in this save. Because of his age. So he's more likely to retire. And just be a mid card. Helping these younger guys go up. And now we get into the decent ones. In the 45D. In a bout of a good heat and decent wrestling, Alligator defeated Jimmy Havoc by Finfall for the Mexican Wave. Alligator's Davis is old school face, wholesome gimmicks, got initial rating of below average. Alligator was really off his game. Jimmy Havoc, Davis old school heel gimmick, he's got initial rating of average. Alligator and Jimmy Havoc have pretty good chemistry in this match, bear that in mind. Alligator in a ring performance of 37 and Havoc of 48. Alligator is improving in, in rumble and performance and havoc in performance. Not bad. Both of them improving. That's really good. I'm just going to have a quick look a minute. This has took me 11 minutes to go through the show and we're not even anywhere near the main event yet. <sighs> and I still want to show you through some other things that are coming. In a 50D plus, in a bout of a great heat and good rest, and Will Ospreay defeated Mark Andrews in 1431 by Pinfall with the Essex Destroyer. I took off Welsh at the end, which went backwards. There was another Mark Andrews in the game. I will be changing it a little bit, so it doesn't say FSW UK. That's because there's future shot wrestling. I'll just put so that just says FS UK because that's our initials. But every show will be FSW two blah blah. blah. Our next show will be called Strike Zone. I set it up yet. That is the next show they're doing in August in real life. It's called Strike Zone in Sport on in August. Um. So yeah, that's what we're gonna call our next show. So it goes with the actual real company. But as I was, let's get back to this. So Mark Andrews has debuted his show still cool gimmick, which got below average. Will Ospreay's debuted his show still a cool gimmick, got initial rating above average. Andrews had a ring performance of forty four and Ospreay at fifty one. There was no work improves, but Mark Andrews getting a ring performance of forty four that impresses me, and that rating really impresses me for what we've got to come. Up next up is Bram versus Doug Williams. This got better than I thought it would. With a 44D and about for a fantastic heat and good wrestling. Graham defeated Doug Williams in 15 17 by a pin for the price side suffering. Now, originally, I had Doug Williams planned to win this, but Bram went, No, I'm more popular than him. I don't want him to win. Thank you. Can I win? So I went with it. Um, Bram debuted as an ego maniac, cocky gimmick. He's got an initial rating of great. Bram seemed off his game. Doug Williams debuted as wrestling machine brute. This got an initial rating. Monster Radio, nah, ignore that. Brown got an in-ring performance of 50, Doug at 49, and oh, hard school cards and versus face still not start the segment. I'm hoping these high rating matches are gonna give our these more pop stars are gonna give us better rating at the end of the night because we need to get I think it's something like 20 plus rated storylines for people to be interested in us in mode. So another little video, I'm gonna have another one of these tonight just to Helps go over the angles. I didn't run them right out, but it's just a video going. Just you know, if you're let's say you're watching on the DVD, you bought it, and there's just a little package showing you what happened earlier on in the evening, which leads into a 54 C minus. This is amazing. In about a fantastic and good wrestling, Saber Junior defeated School in 20 minutes, uh, 20 minutes and nine seconds by pinfall with the European clutch. You'll see how this is going to advance later on. So, oh, we've got a problem here. Who's not going to be for long? So, Mighty Squad has debuted as Arrogant Gimmick. It's got an initial rating of average. So, Junior debuted as Wrestling Machine Gimmick. It's got an initial rating of poor. School say it's strain. Sustain the sprain. PCL. PCL. Oh, I don't think that would be too bad. School had a ring performance of 39. Sabre 65. The former friends has advanced with a segment. Um, school's improving in technical and in performance. Um, Zach Sabre Junior's got heat after backstage after Junior scored a botched move. A great one, but I remain on our first show. 
I love making it on. That joke will be coming quite a few. So next up, we're going to have our main event of the evening, Drew Galloway vs Nick Aldis. The reason I've done this for the title is because I looked on the screen, I'll show you in a bit, and it shows you who your most popular guys are, and these two came up, so I went with these guys for the main event of the night. And I hope it pays off. In a 53C minus, not bad. And about a fantastic and good wrestling, Nick Aldis defeated Drew Galloway in 25 minutes and 24 by a pinfall with a spine shake, and Nick Aldis wins the FSW Championship title. Drew Galloway debuts old school face, got a strange thing. He's debuted his old Nick Aldis is going to be the heel. He's debuted an average. Drew got 40 wing forms of 50, Aldis 52, and the story gained heat in this, and Aldis improved performance. Even though I've got no heel and faces, he's going to be like the heel champion, he's going to be the face. Yet the fans will probably cheer for Nick because of where we're based, even though this is not in that area. So we're going to end the show here. Um, I think we've got a sold out crowd, so we've got a 51D+, plus, which is about what I thought we'd get for our first show. Um, the best rated match actually was not our main event, it was Sabre Jr. and... Zack Sabre Jr. and Marty School. So when I'm going to do the speech, I will give Zack, not Gibson, Sabre and Marty a... I'm going to praise, compliment on good performance, compliment on a good performance, and I'm going to give Nick a hug. So what I want to discuss with you is the future of this series. Um, so basically the future of this series is simply put, this is going to take some time because this loading screen is going to take forever. Oh, it's going to break on me. Great. So the idea of this future of this series is the fact that we're going to hopefully take this company from local to global. I'm thinking about adding more series as we go on the channel. So I'm thinking about doing a, um, I'm thinking about doing a WWE one. I don't know if I want to do another local to global set in America. A lot of people say that the America doing one in Britain is quite difficult. But I think a 51D plus for our first show is not too bad. I'm not doing this as a proper local group. I'm just doing this as a, you know, running a, you know, real life company as I would do in real life. Um, and I think that's the most important thing. I'm going to discuss something now because I don't know how many of you have watched it. Um, that's the G1 Climax. So the G1 Climax is something I have enjoyed immensely. I've only watched two days of it. I'm on day three at the moment. I know something like nine days already. I've, you know, I am a, not a, I was a, a major fan of New Japan for a while. And then they lost Jinsuke Nakamura and AJ and I went off it. Um, but then I realised that they've still got two guys I absolutely adore. Okada and shh, um, Kenny Omega. But I want to know what your opinion is, because I, excuse me, preferred Omega versus Okada 1. So, you know, they've got a face again. They're going to have Okada versus Omega 3. So, you know, what is your personal opinion on that? Are they going to be able to do a number 3? Or is it going to be that, you know, Kenny Omega versus Okada is going to be a major problem? You know, I don't know. Right, I'm going to... I think I'm going to cut this off now because I don't think we're going to get anywhere with this loading screen anytime soon, are we? Because I'm still in the middle of the month. Oh, God. So, what I'll do next time is I'll show you the storylines and the next check show before I start the next show. I'll show you how I book and what I've been doing so you can understand a bit more. And hopefully, you might get a little insight on how do I book the shows. So I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. This was Falling Star Wrestling Episode 1, Part 2. Um, the first show. I hope you enjoyed the first show. I hope you like where the company's going. I have not booked many characters yet because I ain't got a lot of time. So hopefully on the next show I might make the show a bit longer. And just give you a bit more time to meet some of the characters. Especially I want to build up Super Bad Kip Sabian. Still not loading. So thanks for watching. Goodbye.